At least this time I have a little bit of windows that I can see that, oh, it's sunny outside. What I look like? I, I got to pack these now. So you know what you're missing? I don't. You can look know. outside no, 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 and know no, what you're I missing? I I, I, when I click, I, I'm, in, uh, I'm in execution mode. Like, I don't uh, miss my dog, miss my mother or my friends. Um, <laughs> when I work, I just click on it. Uh, actually, kind of obsessively, too. So uh, A little bit. A little bit. But it's, it's good to have a good work ethic, though. Uh, I am no fun to work with, just so you people know. Right? No, it's terrible. We have no Horrible. fun whatever here. <laughs> it's awful. It's like a full sweatshop around here. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's an awful place to work. There's no good food to eat. There's no wine. There's no benefits whatsoever to and working here. <laughs> horrible attitude most times. <laughs> most of the day he yeah, does have um, a bad I, I attitude. I told you, just uh, having a pet tiger is a bad idea. <laughs> I make awful pets. They're very expensive. Uh, and eventually somebody gets bitten. Yeah, eventually. <laughs> I'm waiting for the day. Um, so look at this guy. He's back in his GQ mode. He's got his hair cut. He's basically a supermodel again. I'm also single <laughs> and available. <laughs> Remember when you first met Chef Dennis here at Well Season and he had a spiffy little haircut just like this? He was so happy. He was I like... I had rosy cheeks. I yeah. had a nice attitude. You had no gray hair in your beard. Yeah, that's that's what, what it does. <laughs> Years of uh, aggressive kitchen. It's only been a year we've been doing this. A year. It's not quite our one year anniversary of the classes, but it's like one year anniversary of the pandemic. It's on 13th, yeah, on 13th, when uh, all the whole, uh, the old break helped. When the world through, stopped, so, yeah. yeah. Um, I can't believe it's been a year, but today they announced we're allowed to have uh, gatherings of up to 10 people again, which is amazing because it's my birthday this weekend and I get to see my friends. That um, is exciting. Hopefully they're available. <laughs> hopefully I'll get <laughs> to see some of my friends this weekend. Oh my God. Uh, I'm excited that the weather's supposed to be nice and maybe I'll get to see my friends and share a glass of wine with them and if they're lucky they'll get a piece of cake. If they're not lucky I'll eat the whole thing. I'm assuming there's going to be cake involved. It's my birthday. I, I, don't, I don't know. I, cake. I, Somebody I, cake. I can't wait to make it to the dog park on Saturday. That's, that's, <laughs> what, I'm, that's what I'm looking for. A, uh, a good date with my boy. Oh Louie. Louie Louie. So um, thanks for joining us tonight. We're excited to have you here in our kitchen. Last week, uh, we got a bunch of suggestions for what you would like to learn this week. And one of the suggestions was, uh, what are you giggling about? I'll tell you in a minute. All right. <laughs> one of the suggestions was for Mexicans, specifically for mole. So um, that's what you asked for, and that's what this guy's doing. Yeah, so um, I, my uh, roommate is, uh, is Mexican heritage, and... Uh, I get to eat incredible uh, Mexican food, but I, uh, like we, when we, we make tacos, like we, we do everything properly. It's not like Tex, there's nothing wrong with Tex-Mex or like, you know, posh tacos, whatever. Those are fun too. But um, I really wanted to get to the heart and soul of it this week because I know how it is because of Leroy. Hey man, what's up? I know you're not watching, but whatever. Um, so, so I actually, um, he normally does the tacos. So since I was going to do it this week, I had a go at it, and um, I got kicked out of the station. He's like, 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 dude, just, just get out of here. It's not working. And, and not. <laughs> so hopefully I'm not Don't worry about it. That. Don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, I just would like to show you how to make a corn taco and how easy it is. Uh, personally, I hated corn tacos all my life. Tortillas? Tortillas. Yeah. Taco shells, yeah. yeah. Um, but that was just uh, a hate that came with... Uh, not knowing enough about them. Then there is a uh, Vancouver downtown, there's a place called Chancho Torteria or, or something like that. And they use actually fresh masa, which I'm gonna explain you what's going on with all that. And when I had the first bite to it, I, my just world just got rocked. I'm like, wait a minute, this, I've never had it like this. Right. And, uh, and then I started to nerd out on the subject and read how the whole thing happens. Now I figured it out and I'd like to share it with you today. So that uh, I fed Melissa corn taco today, first uh -huh. time. So Did I, she I like it? One. Her, you should have seen her face. She goes like, what is going on? She goes, I hate corn tacos, but this is awesome. And uh, it, it is an awesome recipe. It's super easy to make. All you need is uh, a tortilla press, which you can um, buy from... Uh, here. Do we sell? Yep. Okay, so we have a tortilla press here, and uh, we can buy, come swing by and uh, grab it. 
And I'll show you how easy it is. And then uh, the other coveted uh, Mexican, one of the coveted Mexican sauces is uh, mole. Now, I know the theory of it. Uh, I made it a few times, obviously. Uh, but today, I just would like to show you my version that I enjoy. Now, there are different types of moles. There are green moles, black mole, and, and a Red. bunch of them. Uh, this is semi-hard work, but it takes you about an hour and a half. So it's not that bad. Some of them just a couple of days. And uh, the payoff is huge. The payoff For is homemade incredible. mole, the payoff is huge. You can buy mole in jars. And some, of the, yep, and some of the artisanally made moles are actually pretty good. Um, there's a couple that you can buy off the shelf. Uh, we used to sell one here, but they went out of business and it was outstanding. Um, so you kind of have to hit and miss, but if you make your own mole, it really, um, it really pays off. It's, it's excellent. Um, yeah. So once you kind of have the technique, it's an easy thing, an easy thing to make. And at also home. this stuff is, uh, the, that's the Mexican barbecue sauce is what it yeah, is. It it is. is. Yeah, and, uh, it is. Freezes exceptionally well. It's not something that's going to go off anytime soon. So you can make this recipe. This recipe yields to about two and a half liters, three liters. Uh, this is a restaurant recipe, not yeah. a necessarily a home recipe. Yeah. So if you wanted to make the recipe that I think Kay will post in the link here, you can cut it in half or cut it in a quarter and no, make no, a no, small just, batch just, just at home. Just do the whole thing. Whole thing and just keep it in your freezer. And then, then you don't have to. Just you pull it out, bring it up to a boil, It'll be just as good. And uh, yeah, they, they should do it ahead of time. Yeah, if they have room and the wherewithal to do that, if they have time, room in their freezer and stuff. But I mean, it's Make in, you can easily, or give it away. <laughs> Make the full batch and give your neighbor half or give, give me half. That'd be great. I'll use it for sure. Um, I think the first time David ever had mole, we were in Mexico and we were talking to the bartender there one evening while we were having a drink. And the bartender was like, what's your favorite thing about Mexican food? And I said, I really love mole. And he says, well, you're not going to get any good stuff at this hotel. The stuff they make here is terrible. And I was like, oh, that's, that's too bad. Maybe <laughs> we'll find it, you know, at a little restaurant in town. And the next day, dude showed up with his mom's mole for me. He brought in a container was of... Was it any good? Uh, yeah, it was excellent. Uh, it was the mole that his mom made. But he's like, this is the best mole in town. Is my yeah. mom's mole. Yeah, Leroy's mom always drops off half a liter, like frozen blocks of things. How does that salsa? <laughs> what is that? I, I give her a hot sauce. I make, I'm, I'm a great pickler, so uh, I make the hot sauce. We just exchange. But um, I'm excited. We also have a little bit of chicken. Obviously, you can take this mole and use it, but fish, uh, cod especially, it's, it sings excellent. Um, chicken, any protein would work with this. And, uh, or, but more uh, preferably long cooked, really soft protein like um, uh, pork. pork shoulder cooked in pork fat, uh, pork belly cooked in pork fat, uh, salted, and that's, that's the result to it. And we're going to make the mole, and we're not going to load up our tacos with like excessive amount of salsas, I mean, which there's nothing wrong again. That is fun to do it at a taco joint, but this time we're making mole and we're eating mole. So if you're a vegetarian, the mole is also really nice with squash. So it, I like it with um, potatoes, roasted squash, yeah, and and uh, I'm stop my so you could use it on like um, stick a hash. Around. It would be really good on like a sweet potato hash uh, with an egg. Anyhow, there's a million things you can do with a really good mole. It is just an all-around excellent sauce. Mm -hmm. it's, it just is. It's it's just uh, delicious. It's there, and. Um, so I think the there. recipes are in the comments, David. Have they been posted yet? Uh, Okay, so Kay's posted the recipes in the comments. So as usual, if you have questions while we're cooking tonight, feel free just to type the questions into the comment section. I'll pass your questions on to Chef, uh, and we can um, go back and forth from there. This wine is really good. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm just, I've, been, <laughs> I've been fastidiously drinking it. This is um, a Border Town uh, rosé, and um, it's a Cab Franc rosé. Excellent. And I was inspired by the sunshine today to have some rosé. It's really nice, actually. Sunshine? It's not super cold, know, the rosé, but it has, it's really flavorsome. It's really good. Um, so some of the ingredients, like the Mexican chocolate and stuff that we're using here tonight, are not products that we carry at Well Seasoned. There's a really great Mexican grocery store here in Langley on the one way called um, awesome. Los Guerreros. Yeah. And they actually sell tons of fresh tortillas in there. 
tamales, um, chips, pork rinds, you name it. Really great quality product. So if there's stuff that you're looking for, um, check out Los Guerreros. There's another store. Is it on Commercial Drive? Uh, it is on Kingsway, 3317 Kingsway. I don't know how I know that. <laughs> I, I know the address for some strange I, I remember. Is that, that Vancouver or Burnaby? Uh, that is uh, in Burnaby. It's okay. on Kingsway and Joyce. Uh, okay, perfect. It, they, they have another branch there. It's awesome. They got like big, like weird coolers back there. Like you have to dig for stuff. Their Mexican chorizo is excellent. And they sell lots of cheese. So the Mexican I'm gonna, cheeses. I'm going to get my chicken started. Okay. You, you don't I'm going to leave. No, 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 go. have to leave. Uh, uh, I just wanted to tell you about Los Guerreros. So it's worth yeah. checking out here in Langley. Please do. They have, uh, they have everything. And you can get the masa harina from there also. So like I said, if you have questions, just enter it into the comments. And I'll forward your questions on to Chef. Um, but otherwise, I think, um, I mean, yeah. Tacos and mole, that's the menu tonight, right? Tacos and mole, yeah, that's All right. it. And we're just going to talk okay. about uh, the Carry on. No. part of it. Now, I'm sorry, I just uh, went ahead and started my chicken. My chicken is a skin-on bone-in Thai. I just wanted to cook it fresh. I salted it half an hour ago. And I'm um, oh, just putting some uh, uh, color on the skin before I pop in the oven. So that's our first um, thing to tackle. Now I'm going to start my fat also. Now your mole ingredients, uh, tomatillos, I charred them ahead of time so I don't have to just like uh, keep you occupied and, and do it in front of you. Okay. Um, tomatillos, put on your, your broiler on, on a very hot grill. Broiler in a pan is the best because as they uh, cook, they will expand and release their juices. If it's on a grill, you will lose those juices. So always uh, do it in a pan under your broiler if you can. Um, I have toasted breadcrumbs, raw almonds, raisins, pasilla and ancho. And also when you go to Los Guerreros, Guerreros, Guerreros uh, they have endless amount of chilies and you can uh, just do a little Google search and try every single one of them, one of those chilies. Pasilla is there, ancho is there, uh, chipotle is there. They're, they're just excellent and so much fun to play with. Uh, you can bring them home, you can just grind them up in a spice grinder, use it on your uh, grill uh, to give different accents. Everybody's using cayenne, you know, you just uh, be the different one. And um, check, check out the chilies and, and, and uh, what not. So, uh, but today I'm using uh, ancho and pasilla. Mexican chocolate, um, absolutely, clove of garlic, and these are all in the recipes. Now, I'm just going to wait until my chicken is out of the way. Now, what is masa? Um, masa, I actually don't know the word name of it. Corn. It co means corn? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the masa means corn. Now, there are two, first things first, corn tortillas, they are only, once they're baked, and they cool down under 120 Fahrenheit, they are only good for tortilla chips. Other than that, they're not uh, good. And the reason for that is uh, starch of the corn is non-thermal reversible. Meaning, once you cook the corn tortilla uh, and coagulate and completely cook it, it will be um, soft, pliable, and in its... Uh, it's just a uh, most wonderful tender form. But as it cools, there's a reason why people uh, have actual tortilla wrappers. Uh, to keep the tortilla, corn tortillas warm, so it doesn't drop under 120 Fahrenheit. You have two hours on a freshly cooked corn tortilla if you can keep it at the right temperature, okay? After two hours, and especially once the, um, once it uh, drops down, the starch of the corn is going to turn into a stiff gel and they will eat mealy and that's the big problem about corn tacos. If you would like to do things ahead of time, use wheat tortillas. Wheat tortillas are incredible and they are the solution uh, to, uh, to be able to make it ahead of time. But corn tortilla is about the tortilla. I'm going to put my chicken in a hot oven and I'm just going to come back and deglaze with mole in about five minutes or so. 
Chef, I gave you some bad info, and Kitty corrected me. Masa means dough, not corn. Sorry. There you go. Yeah. Thanks, Kitty. Thanks, Kitty. Maize is corn. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, um, mom, ideally, which there is no way of doing this at home, uh, you should be able to take your corn, dry it from the summertime, um, and, and you just soak it in lye overnight. Uh, this uh, process is called uh, nixtamalization. Uh, uh, just uh, correct me if I'm saying it wrong. I don't, I... Nixtamalizing uh, corn, which takes off the outer hard membrane of it. The next day, and uh, then, then you just take it and ground it through an industrial machine. Now, the problem with at home, there is not a strong enough of a machine that's going to give you the fine uh, texture of a corn tortilla. Now, it's, you could make a harsher version. like It could have a little bit of grit into it. There's nothing wrong with it. And use a food processor, but it's not going to be the same. Um, you need, uh, like, big grinders, and that's going to just uh, do the job. So fresh masa, you can go to chancho tortilla, tortilla whatever. <laughs> the T uh, word. The T word on Davies Street in Vancouver, and you can uh, purchase fresh masa, bring it home and press it, which is the most ideal way of uh, eating a taco. So there's also a thing called stone ground tortillas, and they're made from coarser ground cornmeal than like the fine masa. Her, the I am pretty sure they have wheat in them. Oh, maybe. Yes, they do. The, the dark yellow ones? Well, they're, they're coarser texture, and they come. you can get blue corn or yellow corn. Yeah, they, I'm pretty sure they have wheat in them to keep them pliable. Um, anyway, so fr no, if you can't find fresh masa, there's something called masa harina. They, take, they do this process, and then they dehydrate it, the whole thing, and then uh, it becomes available in a dirt cheap price. I don't know, it's a giant bag. It's like two bucks. And I have no idea how they make money off it. Like it, it, I was here from Mexico. Here, I'll show you the bag. But it's, I mean, that's their main staple there, right? Yeah, but I mean, I'm paying two and a half bucks for the giant bag here. How do they make money, I wonder? So this is, this is it, okay? And it's widely available everywhere. Even on online stores, you can find it very, very easy. So I'm going to use that tonight, and to that we are going to add a little, normally I add a little bit of lard, but tonight I'm going to stick with a duck fat, which I love, right? You can come to well, well seasoned and grab a duck fat, a uh, sprayable container, or we have them, do we have them in pubs? Awesome. So, and it just takes water. So, um, but since our chicken is out of the way, I have about a liter of chicken stock in this pot, and I'm going to crank this on high. Okay, to this I'm going to add my tomatillos, juice and, and all. Did you start, those were fresh tomatillos. Um, they also yeah, I, sell them at um, Los Guerreros. They had fresh tomatillos yesterday when I was oh yeah, there. Nice, 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 nice. Um, let's not smoke. I just want to make sure that we're around like 300 Fahrenheit. Okay, we're going a bit too fast. I'm going to pull this to the side. Just let it be for a second, okay? Now into my chicken stock pot uh, goes garlic, my chili powders. Uh, you can always also buy these chilies whole, which they are usually salt whole. And uh, you can uh, pour hot water on them and use the liquor in your sauce as well after you grind them up. Um, one Mexican chocolate top, uh, this is about three ounces, goes in. Let's get rid of this. And my uh, toasted breadcrumbs goes in here. There are a few thickening agents just to give that uh, body to the sauce. And after that, with this, I'm just going to start with my almonds in hot oil. Okay, and I'm going to drop my raisins in at the same time. My raisins are going to just puff up and my almonds are going to turn uh, golden brown. In the meantime, I'm going to grab my duck fat. Okay, perfect. This is going 100 miles an hour because the oil was quite hot. I'm just going to add a squish of duck fat in here, about a tablespoon or so. Nice pinch of salt and my warm water. This hot water, tap hot. Okay, about, I would say, 110 Fahrenheit, give or take. And I'm going to 
mix my dough until it comes together. Kitty said she made this yesterday when she got the recipes, Chef, and uh, she didn't have raisins at home, so she used dried cranberries, and she said it turned out delicious. Absolutely. Anything goes. So my almonds are toasted. My raisins are puffed up. Goes into my pot. Just gonna, my dough is slightly wet. Oh, I wore the apron inside out, too. Yeah, you <laughs> like that. Yeah. Everybody's too uh, excited about your haircut. Nobody noticed your apron. <laughs> Everybody's eyes are up here. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Doug wanted to know if you were trading in your baseball cap for a uh, sombrero tonight. No, I just have a new girl. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> I just got to look younger so it doesn't get awkward. I'm kidding. Too late. So, so I'm just going to grab my... Uh, Fat back into the pot. Rather than trying to scoop it out, please, when you're dealing with hot fat like this, just be careful. My sesame seed goes in. These are also going to be nice and golden brown, and they're going to act as thickening agents. Now, honestly, sky is the limit. What we're doing is we're making a flavorsome uh, stock, and we are trying to thicken it with these uh, wonderful uh, uh, ingredients. Let's fix this problem for a second, shall we? Oh, that's good. Now I don't have to call your mom. Moron? Is that what you said? <laughs> no. Call your mom to come and dress you. I haven't seen my mom in six years, I think. Sorry, mom. I think you should bring your mom here for a visit. We can just all show up at his mom's house. Yeah, or we can go down there. Chef, Nina would like to know what's the difference between uh, Mexican hot chocolate and other chocolate. Uh, other chocolate is just chocolate with different uh, dairy, um, sorry, I need that pot, uh, with di different milk content. Uh, Mexican chocolate has uh, vanilla and cinnamon in it. Yeah, and it's a little bit gritty, and I think it's because yeah. it's the cinnamon bark they use, not ground cinnamon. Or, or lack of making good chocolate is what it is. I mean, like the chocolate in, in the Western world is, is a... Very smooth and creamy. Exactly. They, it, the, the tempering process and this and that. I mean, like, same in, as in Turkey, we have chocolate and it's quite coarse. Is it delicious? Absolutely. It's highly edible, sure. But uh, when you take, like, the French application and, and the truffles and all that jazz, they, they got this thing down to the down to a science. So, my sesame seeds are frying. My mole already started uh, simmering. And I'm gonna get my dough on my board. What I'm looking at is a little bit, um, this is not sandy, just so you know, I'm gonna put it together. I'm just gonna bring it together. And I'm gonna knead this about two to three minutes. What I'm looking at is my earlobe consistency, okay? So how's this different feeling from your pasta that you made last week? That's got nothing to do with each other. Because <laughs> this does not have gluten in it, so I am looking for, um, a stiff enough of a dough that I can press that's not going to dissipate and it's going to come off the paper. Uh, corn doesn't have gluten in it, so it's never going to be like a smooth and, uh, and elastic and whatnot. And, that's, and we don't want that anyway. That's not what we're looking for. Okay, and we are going to need this about two to three minutes well, until it comes together. Okay, the more you need it. Now, it is very important. I'm going to stop it right there because I'm, I'm not going to do this for two minutes. Uh, it is very important you make your dough at least a few hours ahead of time so the whole thing can settle and finish its hydration. If you do not, <coughs> excuse me, if you do not need your dough enough or, or like uh, let, let it hydrate enough, um, it will most more likely to fall apart because right now it's quite pliable and it's actually quite soft, but as it sits, the hydration, hydration meaning the moisture is going to start to uh, be um, um, go. Be, uh, okay. Find your deliver, words, chef. Find your words. Deliver itself all over the uh, the actual dough. Okay. My sesame seeds. I like to hear that. That's a nice noise. 
Okay. Um, so, so it could finish. Do we have an extinguisher? I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, anyway. Sorry, I got distracted there. So, so that it could just like completely just equalize itself with the hydration, and this will stiffen up as it sits. Now, this goes there, and with the magic of TV, these were made about two hours ago. Okay, let's get rid of this so camera can see what the hell is going on. Maybe a sip of wine. Well, first things first, let's check on our chicken. Holy hell, what's going on? My chicken looks lovely. I got nice uh, golden brown color on my skin. Nice and crispy, which we don't care for too, too much. I'm sitting around at 140. Now, when you're introducing your mole, depends on the consistency of it, obviously. But uh, if it's a little bit on the thick size, because it might vary. Um, and if you put it in here, it might reduce. So um, the recipe calls for it to toss it in the beginning. But I, I would suggest that it depends on your oven and how much time you have and whatnot. Just keep an eye on it. I'm going with a hotter oven so the cooking time doesn't... So I don't have you until here 11 p.m. is what it is. Um, so, so if I was to put this in the beginning, it will reduce and burn just like those carrots, was it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't think we were talking about that. Oh, the stuff that goes behind the scenes is hilarious. You should see. <laughs> Listen, we are all human beings. Uh, we all make mistakes. In particular, I make a little bit more mistakes than normal. Uh, but my chicken is covered in mole on the skin side, and I'm going to pop this in the oven for another, like, five minutes until it is nice, bubbly, and wholesome. My other mole, sorry. So once this comes up to a boil, we're just going to turn this down to a simmer and put a lid on and let it just bubble away just with, like, that kind of rhythm uh, for about an hour at least. Uh, keep on tasting it. Uh, in the beginning, it will taste a kind of like a little hollow and blank. And eventually, it would start to develop that deep, deep sweetness of a well-made sauce. And uh, as soon as you can uh, taste that uh, doneness, your mole is done. Now. I'm just going to put this to the side, and I will finish the sauce tomorrow. And uh, earlier today, a few hours before the segment, obviously, we cook everything fresh here. I made my mole. As soon as it finished, I just uh, run this through a uh, um, Vitamix or, or a food... Uh, a blender, a blender. food processor. A, a, a super blender, a strong blender. Well, the only thing in there that's hard, right, is the, the nuts. I mean, of. Uh, uh, right, but also you don't have to. That being said, so, so the recipe usually calls for the blended and then pass through a seed, and then uh, so that it is somewhat smooth and it is at that, like, literally barbecue sauce consistency. Now, the solids that you have, okay, do not throw this away. This is super flavorsome. This is the stuff that was in the strainer that just got stuck. You can finish a lot of your, your bean stew with this. Uh, you I can, feel like that's going to be my lunch on Monday. Yeah, it's, it's, it, you can use it as a tapenade and whatnot. All right. I think we're looking good. That was 15 minutes. That was past 15 minutes. <laughs> Doug, says, uh, Doug says, sorry, he missed the timing on the carrots a couple of weeks ago. He did catch the bread. He said the timer's set for chicken, chef. He's got you. Doug's paying attention. Doug? Let, let's let's have a drink, Doug. I got uh, quite a bit of uh, time in my Doug hand. is your homeboy. Uh, thanks for being a friend and uh, keeping the rhythm <laughs> going. So this Mexican class was Nina's idea tonight. So um, thanks for your contribution, Nina. Amazing. Yeah. So we're taking ideas for next week. We were going to do something St. Patrick's Day-ish, but... Uh, 
St. Patrick's Day is Wednesday, so well, everybody will be hungover on Thursday. <laughs> so <laughs> I've never attended the St. Patrick's Day. It's just uh, it's a bit too aggressive for me. It like, can be. I don't know. In, in, on Granville Street or in Gastown, there it gets really, really ugly, very fast. Um, so I just um, avoided it. But um, you know. Now, anyway, we are going to need a hot surface to cook our tortilla. Okay. Again, just like any other dough matter, if your dough is right and it's done right, and if it's restless, the, this thing is going to work. But if your dough is not right, or you had a bit too much margaritas, just like I was on Wednesday, <laughs> <laughs> your dough might not work. But like, uh, if, if you do measure everything right and rest your dough, roll them into balls, rest them again, and then another like, uh, few uh, minutes, uh, you will have, uh, you, you will execute the, this task with ease. Is that your Christmas tortilla press from Santa? No, the Mexican Santa was late. <laughs> <laughs> I received this horrible Christmas gift, and I'm calling that person. <laughs> uh, anyway, so just, we just brought everything back uh, to a bad Santa. What was the party? Uh, it was our staff Christmas gift exchange, and we did a... Uh, a re-gift of your worst Christmas gift. Yeah, yeah, so gift. it's a re-gifting party. So that, you know, the, the gifts that you get? That you don't want to keep. That you do not want to keep. So you bring it and just uh, punish one of your colleagues with it. So I received this really weird gift, so I just brought it in. And, uh, but all, all I, all, the whole time, all I was talking was just like, hey man, like, I'm just like, I, I sent the tortilla press in and I just got this. I'm like, how is this going to work out? I mean, this is not fair, and this and that. Uh, Michelle, um, one of our uh, friends in the store, just um, got me a tortilla press. This so is very David, David ended up with your crappy gift, and you got a tortilla press. So uh, David's doing his Zen garden every day. It's okay. Let's not say what it is. <laughs> they might be watching it. I hated that gift so much. I'm just like, what do you do with like? Okay. Uh, anyway, so uh, let's not get this up. So this is super heavy. It is so funny though. This is all hold together with a little uh, like a hair clip too. It's just have Mexican. You seen that? Yeah. It's just 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 the whole thing is hold together with this little chinzy thing. I don't know what it is. It's <laughs> nice and heavy. It's got a nice surface. I'm the heavier the better. If you can score wood, Mexican Santa, uh, and a custom one too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you can score the wood one, it's the best one. But um, super subtle, chef. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so just a little smear of fat. It doesn't need it, but just give you a little boost of confidence. Just a little bit. Not it's insurance. It's it a is. little insurance. It is. Again, just like we talk all the time, no smells fear. You have to be confident <laughs> with it. Okay, I'm putting it down. There's not a whole lot of trick to it. And you have to use a parchment or something because it'll stick to the press. Yeah, or you can use parchment or there is a very nifty, I mean, it's not a trick anymore. Everybody knows about this. The saran wrap. Yeah, no, you just take this. Um, here, I'll show you. Hello. You just cut the head off. Oh, this is getting a bit too hot. Give me a sec. And then you literally just... Uh, Hide the duck fat. You open this part up. So you're just opening a plastic bag. This is a Ziploc. It's the, the sandwich size, and it works wonderful. Also, uh, these balls are weighed at uh, 50 grams, just so you know, which is good. And then you literally just uh, grab it, put it in, put this on, and you can press it into this too. But I prefer the parchment method. I know it looks like a kind of little bit of work, but believe me, it's not. It's actually quite easy, and you can get quite fastidious. Press it down so it doesn't roll around. So you just start the initial pressing. And then there's no trick to it. You literally just grab it and put your weight on it. Press it really nice. I'm not going to destroy it or anything. Grab your pen back on. Let's go up to seven. Okay. And there's your control tier. I'm missing a little piece that's squeezed out, but you can always put this back on. And then what you do is 
gently, you pull this, peel this back on, back off. Grab this, peel it on your hand. Obviously, spray your pan with duck fat before you do this. And then slap, and you don't touch it. Okay. So you don't need new parchment every time. You can reuse oh, you can, the you, parchment. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't use it. I, I did yeah. punch over there. Yeah. So not to uh, do it again. Now let's do it again. And obviously, what you can do is if you're uh, feeding a bunch of people, or David, or David, which tends to eat a lot of tacos, you can just keep what, cut maybe like ten parchment papers, or you can go to a. Um, store and buy burger paper, which works amazing. It comes pre-cut, okay? And then you just do a stack, and then you just keep cooking the tortilla. Honestly, if you set up a uh, taco station like this in a kitchen and throw a party, you're golden. You're golden. You'll be, you'll be everybody's favorite because literally this makes all the difference. Let's press it again. Want to hear? Grab a bowl. Lightly press, take it, put it down. And goes on top, on your hand, just like this, okay? Oh, I'm out of paper, so I'm not gonna press anymore. So, so that works and that is super duper. Again, um, you can get on uh, online and buy a tortilla warmer or keep, keep them hot. They're actually rated too. There's a bunch of ratings on them. What's Quite, rated? Uh, tortilla warmers. Oh. On, on uh, Amazon and this and that. Oh, they have customer reviews. Yeah, mean. customer yeah. reviews, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you would like, you can just sprinkle a pinch of salt on your tortilla when it's on the raw side. Depends on if you put salt in your dough or not. It's not the end of the world. Now, for this contraption, you are going to need clean kitchen towels. That goes, oh, by the way, let's check on our uh, chicken. That chicken smells so delicious. Isn't it? And it actually looks quite ridiculously good. It's uh, barbecue chicken. So the sauce has gotten a bit darker since it's been in the oven. So, but it, it's, it's because it's baked, right? Yeah, but it's, the, it's not a, it doesn't look like barbecue sauce. It's almost dull. And it's dull from like the raisins and the um, the nuts that are in the sauce. Like a barbecue sauce, because it has so much sugar in it, looks yeah. really shiny and glossy. Yeah, and you can you can add some fat to this and achieve that result. I don't think you need to. I just think when you compare it to a barbecue sauce, people might be expecting that super shiny oh, it, kind it of consistency. I mean, but it's yeah. Original barbecue sauce, in my opinion, is an attempt to abuse you. But in a different way. Say that again. It's the, a what? The veal juice. Yeah. The, the French sauce. Uh, the brown sauce. It's, it, is, it is an uh, attribute to that. I'm pretty sure because they're very, very similar. Which one of them has uh, more uh, fat content? And the corn tortilla. Again, our dish towel goes in. It's a little bit of stiff, but as it sits in this uh, uh, pot with two towels on top, it will start at the steam and sleep there wonderfully. Let's do it again. Do it again, chef. Do it again, Sam. Okay. Slap. Now, if you have like a large grill grate, you can do five or six at a time. Absolutely. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Now. So your pan is pretty hot. It's smoking there. Um, but the pan is dry except for a little bit of duck fat spray. Just a little bit so it fries nicely. Uh, but it's not deep frying or anything. So you just also want, want to keep it pliable. You don't want to completely dehydrate it. Right. That, that is, that is uh, important as well. Because if it's completely dehydrated, then it will crack, which you don't want. Now for the condimento. I have a little bit of serrano salsa. Uh, this is literally serrano chilies that's been sliced, and uh, whatever uh, whatever the weight is, you calculate two percent salt, and you just press them in a jar and you put it on and somewhere is out of sunlight for about a month, and then it's been pulled out, 
and it has been uh, pureed. Now, depending on the meatiness of your chilies, you might want to put a little bit of zantan gum in there just to stabilize the whole thing. Again, see how pliable and wonderful this is. Again, this goes in the towel. Another towel goes on top. Duck fat. Another taco. Another taco, another day. And then you immediately keep this warm. Now, this setup, you will have to figure out uh, on your own at home, obviously, right? Yeah. Uh, like whatever you have. But the idea is to just keep this nice and steamy so that it is pliable. So uh, I'm just going to serve this uh, serrano. Pure. I know Angie doesn't eat too spicy, so I have the... I love that sauce, actually. Yeah, Valentina yeah. Uh, Mexican hot sauce, which is an exceptional hot sauce. There's nothing wrong with it whatsoever. Um, I have some chicharrones. Uh, this is a pork skin that's been peeled off. And then it has been um, boiled, so it's soft. And then they dehydrate it. And then they drop it in the uh, hot fat so it puffs up and becomes this. Uh, it's such a popular snack, especially with the keto diet, that even Safeway you can find, find it. Yeah, they're not the same. The puffs you get at like the grocery store are really puffy and kind of like, almost like eating styrofoam. These ones, the chicharrones that they sell at the uh, Los Guerreros, they're, they're different. They still have like the skin attached and they're, they're just so much different than Absolutely. the commercial ones. I agree with you. And uh, if you're a vegetarian, you can use crispy shallots or you don't have to use it, but it's uh, nice to have a little bit of crunch there. And the only uh, condiment that I love on my tacos, and I don't like too saucy things, you know about this. Hopefully you do. Um, is uh, chopped onions, very fine, so it's not really bothersome. Chopped cilantro. Now, to this, tahin spice I thought would be nice. But that being said, we don't have tahin spice, and we have this uh, very traditional salsa in Turkey that we do with um, uh, Italian parsley. I put a pinch of sumac in there just to give a little bit of acidity so that when you're eating it, it has that crunch and a pinch of extra chili powder uh, so that um, there's a nice warmness to it. So that's that. Now, when you're entertaining, I highly suggest, if you would like to take it, I highly suggest that um, do not compost tacos. Don't, because it's just a waste of time. But can you imagine? Table of five, that you have a taco restaurant. Table of five walks in. They order 25 tacos. You're opening time, and you're a popular restaurant. Now you have 10 tables like that. You have 250 tacos to bust out. Now you're trying to compose everything. It is a little bit of waste of time, in my opinion. So what I like to do is, just like the chancho does, uh, put the meat. Put the condiments on the table, give the taco shell to the people, and let them figure it out. Or if you're doing this at a restaurant setup, uh, what I would like to do is, uh, however many sell the meat by the weight, put four or five tacos, whatever the meat weight is, put the meat on top, put your onion salsa on top, put your condiments on the side, and let them do the work. So chef, if you're having company, and you're making your own tortillas. How many tortillas do you plan per person? Well, it depends on the people. I know, <laughs> but if you're making tortilla dough, I mean, at my house, oh. David can eat about 700. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, th also, this is a very light eat. That's just the beauty of it, right? Little flatbread with a little meat and a salsa on it. Who would have thought, eh? <laughs> like the rest of the world too. Um, so this is this is a. Um, I don't know, man. I don't know. Just uh, what I would like to do is just uh, just keep on making, pressing, and cooking tortillas until they say that that was really good and just like. Or you're out. too drunk to press anymore, like too many margaritas. Everybody make their own damn tacos now. <laughs> it's every man for himself. I also uh, have uh, tradesmen people around me, so when I assign people, they actually execute very well. Oh, that goes in. Towel goes back on. I got one more. We should finish this strong, don't we? Yes. 
little duck. I love uh, cooking with animal fat. Also, whenever you cook steak, roast chicken, just such as in my pan, that fat is free. You don't have to pay for it. And animal fat is exceptional for you. Now let's grab a plate. My, my. I'm gonna cook my last, any questions yet? Uh, no, just some comments about what brand of um, chicharrones people like. And um, yeah, people are just, yeah, commenting on uh, your haircut mostly, Chef. Really? Yeah, people are excited that you're back. Um, I know, I woke up this morning, I'm like, I look good. <laughs> yeah, ridiculously <laughs> good. I'm like, and I'm like, I, uh, who this? I, um, <laughs> I like looking like a bum though in normal <laughs> life. It's, it's a disguise that I use. Nobody ever bothers you. Looking, like, okay, that guy you look skinny. homeless. Like, yeah, yeah well, yeah, absolutely. And I, and I love that look. Just nobody ever bothers you. Nobody says anything, you know, <laughs> just like everybody gets out of the way. Hey, that guy's sketchy. Just, let's not talk to him. <laughs> it's awesome. Me and my dog just walking around being no bothered by nobody. Uh, but it's, in, it's not a conventional way of living. I, I, I do understand that. But We're trying to convince Chef he needs to move here to the Fraser Valley. It's where all the cool stuff's happening. So uh, we're working on him. Yeah. I still haven't been asked out for a hike. That's a when hike. you really work on people. You just <laughs> single them out in the forest. Well, Super I think behavior. you're pretty safe at well season that none of us are big hikers. You've met all of us, right? None yeah. of us are big uh, hikers. Most of us would be like, hey, chef, want to go get a beer? Nobody's going <laughs> to be like, hey, chef, let's go for a hike. No. And once you get into the forest, you know, I had one of these, I have a friend, and her name is Hannah Tarlowski. She's a fascinating human being. And uh, I was complaining about her. I'm just like, why don't you ever come out? She says, all my stuff is at home. Why would I go out? <laughs> so, and, and then I said, you know what? That's a very valid point. Because here's the thing. You take a wild animal that lives in a forest, you put them in a house, give them the convenience of fridge full of food, hot water, warmth, and, and furniture or whatever we use, they will never leave that place and they will defend it with their, with their life. So that's so, Hannah? That's Hannah and me. Hannah's like, don't come to my house, I will fight you. <laughs> I learned a lot from uh, other people. Again, Zebediah, one day I'm walking, he's, he's one, of, one of my juniors, and I looked at him, he did, his socks didn't match. I said, Zeb, I said, your socks are not matching. He goes like, so? I said, all right, I dig it. I said, I stopped, I stopped sorting socks out. It's awesome. <laughs> and he says, that's a personal, uh, it's, it's a, what It's his say? trademark, it's his signature. It's his, uh, uh, I don't know. It's, it's his thing to do, yeah, it's his trademark. So Barb says, uh, Tori will hike with you for food. So if you're I looking for people to hike with, <laughs> <laughs> Once you get in the forest, it's all the same thing. <laughs> Shall we do a taco? What let's do, do it. Let's do this. I'm excited about this. So, okay, let's talk about taco condiments because in Tex-Mex tacos, you need to have like chunky salsa, sour cream. You need to have all the stuff. So, um, it is fun. It is fun. It is fun to eat like that because you're not eating too much wheat, but it's just like a loaded vegetables. They're usually salty, sweet, spicy. They, they cover everything, acidic, uh, everything. So it's, it is a fun way to eat, but just like in pasta, you know how people make the bolognese? Mm -hmm. Normal bolognese would be just like served uh, two tablespoons per person, like literally two tablespoons of ragu just to wet them. But that being said, that kind of simplicity, they make their pasta and they do a good job. So this is about the actual taco itself rather than how you compose it or what kind of artistically you would like to express yourself is what it is. So can we talk about salsa for a second? Sure. Uh, do you have an opinion on fruit salsas? I know. It's just, uh, there is good cooks doing a good job and there is uh, ambitious food. You know, just, no, I, I don't. But I, d I don't mind, like if you're in the right climate, and if there's screaming pineapple everywhere all over the trees, yeah, you should make your salsa with it. Why not? I mean, that is the right thing to do. But if you come in here and buying the dole cans just to make a pineapple salsa, that I'm not okay with. So it's in its own context, um, if you have something to highlight and that is precious, yeah, absolutely, absolutely go ahead. I'm not against anything. I love tomato salsas. Uh, when you find really good tomatoes, it's great. 
I use cooking tomatoes for them. They have more meat. Um, I like fermented salsas, uh, such as this one, like a little serrano and salt, and that's the result to it, and lactic acid. That's the result to it. Um, this onion condiment is a beloved to me, but sometimes I just cook down onions with uh, mustard seeds, and then use that as a salsa if I'm doing a beef taco. Uh, if I'm doing fish, I don't use a whole lot of cooked things, and I just keep it really fresh and push the fish flavor. So it, it, it all depends, but again, Composition inside, as long as you make a shell, it just sinks. It's just, just precious. So now for the taco, are you going to shred the chicken with the mole? I am going to make it, uh, sorry, let me get a sip of wine. <laughs> Somebody's thirsty today. Yeah, I know. Um, I'm, I'm just dehydrated. Sorry. sorry, so I know we talked about this a little bit earlier. So the mole can be frozen yeah. or it will keep in the refrigerator for several weeks. Absolutely, because there's not a whole lot to go off in there. It's right. all, it's... Uh, chocolate and I mean there's moisture it will go off eventually but freeze it yeah. just take uh, this like 250 ml deli cups put them in there pop it in your freezer put a label on it if you're forgetful um, um, yeah. so chef Veronica joined us tonight and she says can you make a taco with tofu instead of meat and how do you prepare the tofu if you're doing uh, tofu with like the mole or um, but I, like, when I eat tofu, I don't eat a whole lot of it uh, because I'm a meat eater. I don't need that soy protein. Um, I love fried tofu when it turns. It doesn't get like really crunchy crispy, but it gets like really caramelized and somewhat crispy. That's what I dig. You just have to make sure you're using like the extra firm to uh, tofu, tofu so it yeah. holds up properly. Exactly. So what I do is you just take it, press it with a little bit of weight. So what I would do would be just like, if that's my tofu block, put a little uh, parchment or a plastic film and just put a plate on it. So it just pushes all the moisture out. So it's nice and firmer. Then from there, you can pan fry it. You can deep fry it. Um, and Veronica, like Kay just pointed out in the comments, if um, you're wanting a vegetarian version, you can do a really delicious squash taco. You can do lots of um, delicious things with vegetables that I think have a lot more flavor than uh, tofu and we'll hold that sauce a bit better. That was really I have no idea what you just said, but it was really good chicken. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't talking to you, so yeah, just yeah, carry great, on, great, Chef. Great. Um, yeah. Chicken is very good, actually. It's actually really delicious. Shall we, Angie? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do this. So let's flip the chicken upside down so I know where the bone is. So I'm going to cut. Pull this meat. Let's pull this to the side. Have you ever done the uh, chicken with the mole sauce on the barbecue? No, I haven't actually. Yeah. No, this is uh, all right. Nina says jackfruit would work well. Jackfruit's just got a lot of moisture in it, Nina, so you have to dry that out as well. Um, yeah, a little taco. And uh, obviously, meat, not too much, please. We're not trying to load this up um, so that this is just like a delightful bite. Little serrano salsa, just a tad. Don't forget, it's uh, everything is there. Um, we're highlighting the mole, like a little mole sauce. Not too much again. We don't want wet food. We want nice, tight, and highly. Oh man, that was. Crazy. And what is that? That's your onion cilantro. That is the cilantro. onion salsa. It's onion cilantro. I put a little bit of sumac because I don't have tagging spice and a little bit of chili. And just for crunch, little chicharrones. That's all right, Angie. That's your turn. I'm excited for this. You should. Um, I want to try the mole sauce on its own first. And after you finish your mole sauce, obviously, just correct seasoning. Um, that means adjust your acidity, adjust your salt, adjust your sweetness if need be. Is it delicious? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you use, you don't use pumpkin seeds. That surprised me. You used sesame instead of pumpkin. It's just a matter of uh, whatever you have along. The, um, have pumpkin seeds also. I mean, pumpkin seeds to me has a, it has a totally different flavor, I think, than the sesame. Um, <coughs> yeah. Um, 
but it has that same texture. You can still taste that yeah. it's not super, I don't know what so, the word is. It's not super smooth, but it's not like eating like a crunchy peanut butter or something. You don't have that same, because you did strain it. Yeah, I did, but I did. I wasn't anal about it, its smoothness and viscosity. That's just, because that's, that's how it is. Right. And how long did you cook this one down? About an hour and a half. Half mm -hmm. an hour just to fry the things and this and that, an hour of simmering. Obviously, the better quality chicken stock that you use, the better it is. Yeah. Right, that will dictate, but uh, all I'm right. going in. Um, there's no uh, cabbage on your taco. Well, it's not great Pacific Northwest. I'm a Mexican at heart. <laughs> you want a napkin? Mm hmm Oh my god. Isn't it delicious though? It's yeah, just so good. It is not wet. It's not like overly seasoned and it just has that dryness, but it's still very succulent because everything is super fresh. You know, when I was at the Mexican store, I bought tamales and the this tortilla reminds me of the tamales. They use the same masa. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because they have the masa. They're mm -hmm. not going to grind that thing. It's so good. Can I just taste the chicken by itself? Yeah, yeah, yeah with, the, mole, with the mole, 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 mole. Um, I think this is, uh, yeah. No, it's just delicious. Yeah, it's so simple. Um, because it, because it's about the sauce. It's about the fresh version of the sauce, as well as dehydrated and caramelized with heat. Yeah. So we're doing cross back and forth. Yeah. This is like I could eat, not 700 like David, but I could definitely eat. Don't worry, David can't eat it either. <laughs> four or five of these for sure. Um, this is not your sort of traditional takeout taco that you get from, what's the chain here in town? Like taco the, time. No, not That's taco not time. Bell's, um, Bell's and Bell, Taco Bell. Taco Bell, whatever. This is not been. your uh, typical Taco Bell taco. Um, David is like climbing to the ceiling right now. This is crazy. He's not getting um, a taco, that's why. <laughs> um, this is like really authentic. This reminds me of the food you get from a street cart in Mexico where they fry the tortillas to order. Um, the chicken they use in Mexico well, is that? much different than the chicken we get in North America. And Chef, you haven't been to Mexico. but no, when, I was working the whole time. But when you're in Mexico, the chicken there is very yellow like the flesh of the chicken, and it's because they feed the chickens corn. So um, the flesh of the chicken isn't white like we're used to here, um, but it's still really delicious and really flavorful chicken. It's just much different than we're used to seeing. Um, so I think the mole sauce is super versatile. You can use it on a lot of things. Like I said, the mole on the squash would be really phenomenal. Yeah, potatoes is great too. Potatoes are awesome for, yeah. uh, for that too. Um, I'm excited about this, actually. <laughs> I've never done this before, just like, you know, eat in front of you. But what do you think Leroy would say about your tacos tonight? He'd be proud, man. Really? Yeah, of course. Let's call Leroy. Let's, get, let's invite Leroy here one night. All right. All right he's a bit of a reserved guy. But all right. Let's see. <laughs> Maybe Leroy can make us Mexican food one night. I well, does good. it pass? We don't need no stinking La Taqueria. I need a raise. A oh, raise. <laughs> Let's have a telethon for Chef Dennis. We'll give Chef a, a raise. We'll have a telethon and maybe go start a, go, a GoFundMe <laughs> for tacos. <laughs> Anyhow, this is really good. As usual, um, this is something that Chef hasn't made a lot. And we sort of put him on the spot and said, hey, let's do taco night. Let's make mole. Let's make fresh tortillas. Mm, more, more. And he did, and he did a great job, which means you can make this at home. I mean, you're not Chef Dennis, but I, you just need a little bit of confidence, the right ingredients, and now you've got some instruction that you can look back on. There's no magic to it. There's, 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 literally, there's no secret to it. Everything right. happened in front of you. You have the recipe. It's not complicated like um, croissant making. Uh, that It's not a challenging dough. It's probably the easiest dough you'll ever make. The only thing that was made ahead not in real time is the mole sauce and that's because that had to simmer down for a little while but everything else was made in real time so you I mean, can the, the dough was made ahead of time just so it it could rest but you still made a batch in real <laughs> time um 
so next week, I'm curious what you guys will come up with next week for um, Chef Dennis. Do you have any anything you're dying to make next week? Yeah, challenge him into something weird and hard. Weird and hard. All right. Okay. Very reasonable, though. I mean. <laughs> Um, so maybe you have something that you've been dying to learn more about or would like to talk about and, and um, maybe explore a different kind of culinary style or maybe some ethnic type food. Um, and no sushi, please. I, I don't do Japanese cuisine. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't. I'm not very, um, I love eating it, but I'm, I'm, I, 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 I just go out for it. Yeah. We have a new sushi restaurant that opened next door to us here, two doors over. So, Musa, is it? yeah, and so everybody's it means been eating Moses there. In Turkish, that's popular. Sushi <laughs> Moses. Mm. I haven't been yet, but the girls who work here have right. eaten there, and they really like it. So, I'd love to hear your feedback. You can send an email to askachef at wellseason.ca, and give us your suggestions for future cooking classes. Um, yeah, I think tonight was a success, Chef. I'm excited so. for this. Maybe um, I'm gonna destroy the rest of the tacos. Just so you know, as soon as done here. <laughs> yeah, he's had three glasses of wine. He's gonna put a hurt on the rest of the tacos. Um, anyhow, uh, thank you for joining us tonight. Thanks, Chef, for uh, busting Thanks, out your man. Christmas gift for Happy us. Birthday. Oh, thank you. I'm so excited to see my friends. Maybe this weekend. I need to get home and figure out how I'm gonna do that. Um, anyhow. Uh, thanks for joining us. If you have questions about anything you learned tonight, send an email or um, post them in the comments here on Open. the thread. This uh, Facebook uh, live video will live here on Facebook, so you can come back to it if you want to cook along with us. The recipes will be posted on our website, and the video is posted there. Uh, we are open seven days a week here in Langley, so if you'd like to come in and visit us, I come um, say hi in the kitchen. Stick right, your head in the kitchen. The kitchen. Yeah, yeah. Say hello don't to Chef. Don't be a stranger. It makes him feel like a bit of a rock star when people are like, Chef, I saw your video. It was awesome. Um, I might be in a bad mood, though, just saying. He's well, never in a bad mood. I told you about the tiger thing. <laughs> <laughs> he's never in a bad mood. So stop by and see us here in Langley. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, thanks to our friends at Bordertown for the yeah, delicious, delicious rosé. Um, and we'll see you right here next Thursday at 530. Cheers to you guys. Cheers. My glasses. Cheers. Back.